Welcome back, DIYers. Project for this little video today, to turn this ugly old flower bed behind me, that's original to the house from 2008, into this beautiful raised flower bed with a desert tropical theme. So stick around, let me show you how I did this. And as with any project, demo is always the first thing. And the first thing I need to do is get all these rocks out here. I'm not reusing these here. Actually, I've got a spot in the back. I'll show you, I'm gonna use them uh, around one of the trees back there that right now has got cinder blocks around it to keep my dog from digging in the dirt. So I'm gonna replace those ugly cinder blocks with these rocks. They're not that much prettier, but they're better than cinder blocks and they'll keep them from digging. And along the way in this project, I've got a couple obstacles we'll have to deal with and I'll show you those when we get started. Okay, you can see the three cinder blocks that are going to go away. All right, all the rocks are out. Well, I say all the rocks. I'm sure I'll find more when I get to doing more of the demo here. So as far as taking out the bushes, we got a couple ways we can do this. One. I had a rope or a chain I could hook to my truck and yank them out, but I don't. Plan B is if I got this rope, I'm gonna wrap around the base of each one. I've got this piece of fence post and I come along and a two by six block here and we're just gonna ratch them out. At least that's the plan. And there we go. Now I know every one of you watching thought, this ain't gonna happen. Well, I've done this once before. And just like that, I got all the bushes out. Now, here's a tip how to get rid of these without having to pay the expense of haul them off to the dump yourself. If you're like me, I don't have a green waste system. So, got a little workaround. What you do is, you take you some shears, you cut all the branches down at the root bulb and take you some hand trimmers and just cut it up into smaller pieces until you got the whole bush done. And like that, we're all done. And all three bushes fit in there and only filled it up about half full. Now all you gotta do is on trash day, take it out to the curb. And like that, it's all gone. Now, you consider how much it costs to dump and the price of gas, probably save 30, 40 bucks. And it took me two hours to do it. All right, so a couple things I have to kind of deal with before I get uh, too far along is, A, I got two sprinklers that are gonna be in the way and they need to be moved. I actually count the third one would be here. And B, is clean out. Now I'm not moving that, but I just have to kind of design around it is all. But first, I'm gonna lay out the pattern and get it cut out. Now, I want the new bed to go corner to corner of the house and out five feet. You can see I've already kind of got to start there. So I'm gonna mark off five foot. I'm gonna take an old hose that I don't care about and mark out my pattern. And then I'll take some spray paint and paint it. Now that'll be the shape of my new pattern. All right, so I got that marked out. Now I'm just gonna take my spade shovel and go along and chop through the grass. I gotta be careful because that sprinkler and this sprinkler and that sprinkler are all in the same zone. And I got one right over there, it's on the same zone. So I'm gonna guess there's a pipe running from here across, attaches here into that one and then it tees out. So uh, this is already cut, so I just need to be careful there 
And when I get over there, that I don't go too deep and cut through that. And I've already called, for those of you wondering, I called the 811 and had them come out and map utilities. And they didn't map anything out here. So I'm guessing that means no electrical or other than sprinklers, plumbing coming through here. Didn't have to be perfect. Like I say, I wanted one inch past five feet because it gives me one inch buffer when I lay my bricks uh, for the raised bed. Now I'm just going to take a flat shovel and go under. And I got a couple places where I want to lay some sod, so guess what? That's where this will go. Next thing is these sprinklers. Like I say, this one here, I'm going to have to assume connects to that one over there, to this one, and to that one there. So what I'm going to do is start here, dig that way, uncover the line, and just follow back and see where it ends. What I want to do is put this sprinkler in the center of this flower bed, and I'm going to put it a little more towards the wall. And then this sprinkler here needs to go outside the wall or outside my flower bed because it's what waters the grass. And then this one here, I haven't decided yet if it's going to stay there or if I'm going to move it in and have it part of this flower bed. But basically, we'll start digging until we get to it. I'm sure I'm going to have roots, rocks, and oh, just so you know, my soil here is very clay based, so I got very little topsoil and then it's all clay. Okay, what I found is, is instead of the main trunk running this direction, this is a tee off and I'm going to guess the main trunk runs here and this one tees off of it. That one tees off of it. That one tees off some, I'm guessing there's a long pipe like this teeing off of it and there's a sprinkler head over there that I'm guessing it's running to and terminating what I'm guessing. So before I tear into this to find the end of that, let me see where that one, if that one tees off and if so, which direction. It might be that I get lucky and all I got to do is move the tee to the other side and I can get it over there. But we'll see. All right, well, looks like it tees this direction. That's the thing about when you didn't put them in, you have no idea how all this stuff runs. So I'm going to cut a wide path here and hope that the main trunk is about right here because I do have a sprinkler head there. And maybe the main line here tees off, feeds this one and that one. But we'll see. So I'll start here and see what we get. Okay, things didn't work out as I was hoping. So what's going on is, is this sprinkler head comes in and ties into this main trunk here. And this trunk goes that direction, that direction to pick up that sprinkler. And then it goes that direction to pick up the rest of those. So my original plan is no longer any good. So what I'm going to do is, is there's another trunk right here that goes to the first zone of sprinklers and there's not a lot of room in between. So what I'm going to do cut this off here put a cap on it and i'll maybe reuse this section here to move over now let me show you what's going on on the other one so this one runs along and there's got to be a main trunk that runs up this direction that picks all the sprinkler heads up along the side of the house so what i'm going to do is cut this one about right here i've got a new 90 attach this here and that'll move this down and put it on the other side of my um raised bed wall so let me show you how we're going to do this so what i need to do is make sure i got plenty of dirt out of the way in this area here so i can work underneath here and then i'm going to cut this and the other thing is i'm sure i haven't run the sprinklers in a couple of days and i kind of did that on purpose to see if I can keep from having water in this line so when I cut it, this doesn't fill up with water. But I may not uh, get so lucky, but we'll find out. 
So before you put your cap piece on, I'm gonna have to rough this or sand this pipe up. But before I do that, I'm gonna take and try and clean as much of this dirt off of here as I can so that when I sand this, I'm not just sanding dirt into the pipe. Okay, this is three quarter pipe. How do I know? Because if I uncover the dirt from this, you'll see the writing on it that tells me so. Now I want this cap not quite down to here. Give it a little bit right there. The cap's gonna seat, or the pipe's gonna seat clear up into here. Let's say right here, and let's cut the pipe right there. Got these pipe cutters. Okay, great, no water. Now, get this out of the way. Okay, I just got some 120 aluminum oxide paper here to you use to kind of sand and roughen this up. And you don't need to sand a lot. In this particular case, I'm just doing it to try and get it clean and the surface roughed up at the same time. Just like that. And to take this cap and do the same thing on the inside. And you'll notice this is kind of thin walled and it's kind of a yellower color than this. And that's because this is actual PVC. I think this is uh, CPVC. So, uh, and differences as far as I can tell you is the thickness of the wall. All right, so we got that. Now I just went and got uh, all purpose. You see PVC, CPVC, and ABS uh, as a primer and a cement. You put the primer on both pieces and you put the cement and you put it together. You gotta be careful so you don't get this crud on you. This is why I needed room underneath so I could get around this to glue and primer it. Okay, take our cement and repeat. Put it around there, around inside here, and then as you put it on, give it a little twist and hold. If you don't hold this stuff, I'll actually push it, your fitting back out. And you want to give it a little twist so that it all gets covered. But you can see, it's already set. And that's all you got to do. Okay, I got it cleaned off. I got it marked where it's going to go. I got my new 90 that's threaded. That'll go on here. I'm going to reuse this part here and just rehook it. So let's cut the pipe and so that it doesn't squish and flatten it and give you a crooked cut. Because it's so thin walled, I'm going to kind of give it a twisting motion until we get it cut. There, and great, no water. Got that cut out. Let's take this off. I got my three quarter to half conversion here. I'm gonna go ahead and thread this on. So it'll be like this. And then down, I've got it tighter than what they had it. Again, take your paper, do the same here. Get it in here, put it around, put it in. Again, put it on with a little twist and hold and done. All I need to do is shorten this a little bit, move it in. And to do that, we'll just take this knife, cut down along the edge. that cut it about right here push this on like that here's the wall perfect all I got left to do is pack these all back with the dirt put the sod back in place and we move on to the next part time to get this figured out I want a sprinkler head back here and the one that come out of here has enough spread to go from side to side if it's in the middle and spray forward. But as you saw, I've got a main line coming down through here. So the question is, how does this tie in? Also, this sprinkler head needs to come up about two, two or three inches. So this here, sprinkler, 
to begin with was too low in the ground anyway. I went and got a six inch pop-up, which when it sits down here where it wants to, will be right in line with the ground. So that part's easy. The hard part is I gotta put a T in here because I don't have a lot of room. I've got it cut out as big as I could go. So I'll have to uh, do some engineering here. And the other thing is, is yeah, this pipe here I'm gonna reuse and that'll go there, but it's gotta come up a little bit of an angle. And I got a 12 inch pop up for it because this trench here to where the new ground level is going to be is 20, 21 inches. This is 16, so I'll have this up about four inches and it'll sit at, and I say ground level, it'll be ground level plus an inch of rock and that's where it'll sit. So the first thing I'm going to do is set center. So I know where my sprinkler head needs to go. And the center is right there. Now the sprinkler head or the gravel, top of the gravel is going to sit level with the brick. So my sprinkler head sits right in here, that'll be okay. This sits level. That's good right there. So, let me just mark the edge of this. Pipe sits inside here an inch. So I'm gonna mark three quarters on each side. And the reason is, is so I've got a quarter inch of play back and forth to get this in here. So hopefully I've got enough flex that I can get this in and do it. If I do nothing else but get it flat, that's okay because I got room at the end with that flexible hose. I darn sure don't want to have it too high up. So if anything, I'm gonna err on the caution of flat. And like I say, this is gonna be the hardest part because I gotta get all of this put together I don't have a lot of leeway. Alrighty. Right there it is. We got her. Put the new six inch in. Both of these are adjustable from zero to 360. So if I don't want, if it's not high enough to go over the top of my wall, I can make it, you know, a 270 and spray that way. Kind of hoping it'll go over the wall so I can get watering from the front and from behind. But if not, that's okay. All right, that's out of the way. There we are, and that's where it'll go. So what I'll do here, just get some dirt in there. Get that set where it needs to go. That's pretty close. A little higher up. Get some more dirt. Get this packed in. Okay, got the sprinklers all fixed. I got that one set where it's supposed to be. Yeah, it's up high, but remember the dirt's going up to the bottom of the brick. Got this one fixed. The next time I'll put stakes in to mark off the area so I can run a level line so we can dig a trench to put the blocks on. I want the top of my blocks to be one inch above the foundation. Slide my neon light rope down here. Okay, right there is zero. So from there to here, my brick is out of level by about an inch and 15 feet. What are you gonna do? Oh well, you gotta work with what you got. Okay, 
let me get this all finished up and then we'll start digging trenches. Next thing I did is I went around and I measured where the string line hits the dirt. Now each block I have is four inches. So down here, from the string line to the ground is over 12 inches. So that means I'm gonna have to have four blocks. So it's gonna go four blocks to about here, and it's gonna go three blocks to here, and then this little bit will be two blocks. The ground slopes quite a bit in this little bit of area. So next, what I'm gonna do is start digging out the trench. Take my flathead shovel. I've got markings, this says four. Up here it gets to four, and then I think it's six, but I'll dig this down and I'll measure and dig until I get it level. And then we'll tell you what we're doing next. Now, the dirt I'm taking out, I'm gonna reuse. The reason I'm digging so deep is, is because I'm gonna have one inch of uh, base, or two inches. Sorry, I'm gonna have two inches of base because this is kind of sandy clay based soil and putting two inches of a packing base down to hopefully firm it up so during the I don't want to say freeze thaw but the drought rainy weather if you will the ground dries and moves hopefully it won't cause this wall to heave and be all crooked within one season and then on top of that will be an inch of sand and I'm using just a flat headed shovel in order to do this This shovel here marks where it goes from four blocks to three blocks. Put this where the next spot is. So as I'm digging, I get so far and then I'll just take my tape measure and I'll measure and make sure I'm hitting where I need to. And if I'm too deep, then I'll come back and fill. I don't need it perfect. I just need it close. It's a little too high. I'll just scrape it down. And the reason is, is I don't want this way out Of alignment and rely all on my stone and sand to make up for it. Okay I got my trench all dug for the blocks to go in and you can see I've got it stepped in three spots. It starts there at the foundation, steps once there, comes around and steps once there. And each one of those steps, well, they're four inches, just like the block. So the next thing I'm gonna do is put this limestone packing material in there. I wanted what they call three-quarter minus, meaning the stone's as big as three-quarter and goes down to dust to pack. But I couldn't find any in my area, and this is the best I could get was this limestone pack. And for this, it'll do fine. Now, most people will just do sand and go on, and that's okay. But I've already got a sandy clay base, and so I want this harder packing material down first to firm this up. Like I say, when I go through my summer, winter seasons, when it's rainy, the soil expands. When it's dry and drought like it is now, the stuff contracts, and I don't want my wall to do this due to that. So I'm hoping this will take care of it. I'm gonna put sand on top of it, but I'm gonna put two inches of this first. What I'm gonna do is just start putting the base down in there. And I'll smooth it out. And measure to where it's about a two inch pack. And I wanna pack this to where I'm about three quarters short of where I need to be. And the reason is, is I'll put that inch of sand down and when I go to set the blocks and put them in, I know 
it'll sink more than that. It'll sink me down to around that one inch mark. All right, you take my eight inch tamper here. Now I'm just gonna water this a little bit. And I'm gonna take and tamp it again. And I'm using the water to hopefully get a tighter pack. Get it even tighter. I am about a half inch low. I'm good to hear. Fill that in, get it tamped down, and we'll come back and check level. Okay, I got all this packed. It's level this direction. It's a level across here. or really, really close. I've gone ahead and watered it. This section's done. I'm gonna go ahead and do the next two lifts. Then we'll be ready for sand. Okay, new day, new shirt. So I went to the Home Depot and got some bag sand. I don't need that much. I figured I need about one and a half cubic feet. I got four bags to be safe. So what I'm gonna do is these are just a little under an inch thick from the outside diameter. I'm gonna put them in here like so. I'm gonna pour sand over them, rake the sand down. That gets me about almost an inch. I'll fill the holes, but I'll do all the way around this tier here. Then we'll get the blocks and start setting them. Well, that wraps up this section of the video in part one. Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification so when part two comes out, you're notified. And in part two, we actually get the plants put in. So stick around so you can see which ones we use for this desert tropical themed raised flower bed. And so until next time, happy DIYing.